I did the home. I did the homework. I did the homework. You do your homework on YouTube, right? You do your homework on YouTube. Let y'all know what's going on. Mike over here trying to explain YouTube to me. <laughs> Mike. Mike, y'all. Mike, man, who say he don't watch, he don't consume content. Man, say he telling me about how content get created. I don't consume YouTube content. I don't. See, look, his camera froze and all that. He don't even know what's going on right now, man. <laughs> what is going on? Look at that, man. He got that, man. He need to get off that cricket wireless, man. He over there staying with them El Salvadorians. He need to get it together, man. Ah! <laughs> get off get all clear on that and get on the internet, bro. <laughs> what are you doing? Man, I'm in a back room sweat like a sauna. That's why I wear a black t-shirt today. Sounds like you ain't gonna see the sweats today. If you don't believe in climate change, if you don't believe in global warming, if you don't believe that things are changing, may the Lord help you and save you and bless your heart because how much more evidence do you need? I am sweating right now, bro. Sweating. And did you know in Arizona, I think it's in Phoenix, they had 30 straight days of 110 plus degrees? In a desert? Oh, okay, Chris. So this, the equivalent would be like, oh, if it gets to like <laughs> negative 10 for 30 straight days in Minneapolis. Oh, I've never been in Minneapolis. You should go. Actually, there's some, there's some cultural things to do. It's high. It's high. I did meet someone from Minneapolis many moons ago. Oh, <laughs> but, you um, want to tell that story? <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, point being, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I don't know, man. I, I, everybody talking about global climate change. My grandmother was talking to me about it. It's weird because my, my grandmother was a very big proponent of, uh, she used to watch Fox News. That was her preferred news site, you know, cut from the same cloth. Talk, talk about you know? your villain origin stories. You, you be getting fed this information since a youth? Fed? I was fed anything since you, you know what I'm saying? I talk about it all the time. I had to make my own food. Anyway, point being, <laughs> point being. I had to turn my TV on myself. I did the science myself, man. I did all the algorithms. I did all the maths thing, man. <laughs> So point being, she was used to watch Fox News and she used to get mad all the time. Me and my brother was mm-hmm. like, Granty, Granty, you got to stop watching Fox. You got to stop watching Fox. You got to start trying to watch MSNBC. You got to mm-hmm. try to watch CNN. You won't get mad. You won't get mad. Mm-hmm. That might have been the worst thing me and my brother could ever say. Because at least when she's watching Fox, the conversations was entertaining. Now, the conversations are just Sad. talking points. Like she, mm-hmm. she don't have her own talking points. They're just talking points from the TV. And it's like, she's telling me like it's information. And I'm just like, okay, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. But at the same time, my, my learned mind is telling me that's not the whole story. Like she's like, climate change is real. You know, people mm-hmm. want to deny it. Woo, woo, woo. Me and my brother be knowing like, but in 2007, you was like, climate change wasn't real. It was just fake. This and that, this and that. It's like, whatever the news tell her, she just believe. So she was talking about how climate change, I'm saying this all for your story. She's like, climate change is real. and We need to do something as humans. We got to change the way we consume and we got to get us off fossil fuels. She just sent all the talking points. I'm mm-hmm. like, granted, it's not that, it's not that simple. Like, nah, it's not. COVID proved that. No, everybody, nobody was driving except a couple, maybe a couple hundred thousand people in a nation of 300 plus million, right? And the climate change did not reserve, reverse at all. It's the why corporations. Though, it's the okay, okay, okay. I'll, yeah, and, and why? And, Elon, yeah. Elon, our only hope. We got to get them to help them build the rocket so we can get out of here, man. We got to terraform Mars, man. We got to get out of here, man. It's over. I'll be telling, I was at my mental house talking to his daughter, man. She like, nah. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you're now old enough for me to dump all my conspiracy theories in you. I said, when I was little, you used to be able to go outside and go, ah, 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 and eat the rain. Now if it rain, you do that, you don't get the disease. You get warts in your tongue. You can't eat no more. We used to be able to eat the snow right off the ground. We would wake up. It's snowing outside. Yay. A little ice cream cone, like a little icy, little bit icy cone. <laughs> no, not even. I'm, I guess. I don't know. Not even. We just had- Oh, just like grab a ball. Let's like grab a little ball. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Make a little yeah. ball. I, I, yeah. Just a little fistful. And you just go ahead, go to town, eat it. Mm, Never it did good. that. Now you do that, time. man. Exactly. I grew up with bullets. Um, but the point being, <laughs> point being, it was like that. And I was like, but you can't do that no more because the world different. You got to start prepping for doomsday. You understand what that is? You got to start preparing yourself and get land with an aquifer because the time is upon us. The doomsday clock is about to hit midnight. It's almost over. Do you understand that? And she's just looking at me, shaking her head. Or the mother was just laughing. And I was mm-hmm. just like, man, I'm telling you some real stuff. You're going to look back at, in, a, in 15 years. You'll be like, Mr. Chris was right. Mr. Chris was right. The thing I was like, that's right. I was right. And I hope you prepare. You know what I'm saying? I hope you prepare. Hold on. Let me take a second and say this. Like, subscribe, 
follow Beyond Her and Evil on YouTube, man. If you're watching, <laughs> like and subscribe. If you're listening, like and subscribe. And if you really want to hold us down, send us to somebody, bro. We try and grow the podcast, man. So, yeah, man. Beyond Her and Evil. YouTube backslash Beyond Her and Evil. So, welcome Beyond Her and Evil. You know? Oh, it's a great podcast. Comedy podcast. <laughs> We talk about funny I, stuff sometimes. I think we should, there, there should be like an application to have children. And the day you submit an application, I'm going to personally write a recommendation for you to be revoked. Mm-mm. Not, well, not, well, not, 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 well, not, not, not letting you just have just like the unlimited amount of time to just dump that nonsense into a kid that early for them to be able to weaponize it and do something with it. Mm-mm. I don't like that. It's like if you look into the future 50 years with like a Chris 2.0. I don't know, man. Danger. Scary hours. I, I'm, not, I'm not ready for yeah. that. I'm not Even ready for taller. That. Even stronger. Even slimmer. I would have used the word aerodynamic. <laughs> That's what I mean, more but, you know, to each his own. You know? Mike 2.0, you know, won't be pocket size. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so there's that, you know? I, I mean, we could just use the word taller, but... Uh, and also toxic mike talking about there needs to be an application to have kids what is this communist china this i thought this was america you can have 18 kids before you're 18 years old you know what i'm saying whatever you want to do if you're shooting and she's taking it hey the babies are going to bake in it come on what are we doing what are we doing you can have a kid every day as soon as you're able to you know get deep inside you can have a kid every day as a male. That's that's wild. I never thought about that. Somebody said that on the podcast. He's like, I have a kid every day. Every day of the month, I can have a kid. Women can only have a kid once every nine months. I was like, uh-huh. I never thought of it like that. Way more responsible. Way more responsible. Yeah. But still, you know, it's a lot of single moms with 10 kids out here. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm. Can be responsible, I guess. I guess life is, life is life. You know, pro life. Welcome to Beyond Hood and Evil. We're your hosts. I'm Mike, and that's Chris. What's up? Slim, what are we getting into today? You already know what it is, Beyond Hood and Evil, and today, <laughs> for the beyond of it, <laughs> we're getting into selfishness versus selflessness. Mm. I'm not sure where this copper is going to take us, but I'm sure it will be infotaining, as usual. Mm. I've been noticing that we're on a new track for the past season, man. It's like we're on this like, philosophical self-discovery metaphysical type of track now like first season we was figuring out talking about sports and all this other nonsense second season we kind of got really into personal development you know what i'm saying really 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 into growth and development that's what we were we were a growth and development podcast then now we're like in this like really really self-reflective area like just talking about all the inner workings of man and very what's the word it's when you existential we this season has become very existential and that's something i did not see coming <laughs> Not at all. I thought I was through my existential phase, but I guess when life keeps throwing you all haymakers, <laughs> you just got to get up off the canvas and try to figure out what went wrong. <laughs> so we're here, man. That's what we get into today. I, I, you stand corrected. First season was all about current events. We talked a lot about politics. <laughs> we talked a lot about uh, COVID. Yeah, that, that, that was mm-hmm. current events. That, that, was, that was the first season. Second season, yeah, we, we went on the PD side, professional development, personal development. Um, this mm-hmm. season, Chris, I'm going through an incredible season of my life. So I'm really reflective in this moment. And, you know, just like many people coming out of the pandemic, this is still a season to reflect, to be introspective, to think about the existential things that are occurring around you and inside of you. Chris. So explore that. I let that become external. And I like that we can talk about that stuff so I can get this shit out my system. So thank you, sir. I appreciate you for accommodating my headiness and beyond topics. So uh, in the spirit of me being selfish (laughs) with these topics, (laughs) and the reality is I gave Chris three topics and I just want y'all to know behind the scenes, I give Chris terrible topics and they're terrible topics because they're all beyond topics, not no evil topics, not no hood topics. I'm giving Chris all beyond topics. Again, where we're talking about existential things, Chris hears that and he cringes a little bit. He'll be like, man, I'm tired of talking about this, man. We need to give people entertaining things. So I'm like, Chris, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? And now, right now, Chris, I'm actually posing that. Let the people know. What do you, what, what would you rather talk about? Because there could be an open debate from our listeners because we are growing at subscription base, right? My followers are coming through, commenting. I love the love we're receiving. So I actually would like to think what their thoughts are on the topics that we cover because they listening. 
to all these beyond topics. What do you want them to hear? Because they might not like. Well, I mean, it. you know. <laughs> what? what? People they love might have... my content, man. <laughs> Look Your at content, the numbers. Our man, Larry content. Jones, our, doing our, numbers. Our, our doing content, numbers. Our content. Our content with your selfish ass. Our content. Man, we know, man. We all know what it is, man. Look at the numbers, man. What the, likes <laughs> what the, what the follows, man. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. You know what I'm saying? They came to see David Ruffin. What you talking about, man? <laughs> what you talking about, man? But nah, for real, for real. I've been trying to figure it out. I like talking about stuff that's more, uh, to have a little bit more levity. Um, mm-hmm. Because. It's just easier to broach those serious subjects in that way. That's the only reason why I be trying to figure out a, front, a lens or a frame to have these type of conversations. So, you know, Mike brought his topics and he said, you know, stuff. And I was like, oh, I'm not really feeling those things. Those I can't I can't figure out the, the I'm not in a comedic space where I'm able to talk about the things with levity without it just deep, like devolving into like a real introspective conversation. And I'm not mm-hmm. necessarily sure that's what people want to consume in a large, vast quantities. So I was like, well, let's talk about being selfish, like the idea of being selfish or selfishness. And then Mike was like, yeah, let's talk about selfishness versus selflessness. And I was like, mm. Mm, bars. <laughs> so that's why I say nothing like that. I ain't say nothing like that. I just say that, that's what we talk about. And I'm here to rock with you, man. My main man wanted it, said it was all right. Let's talk about it. I'll try and find something we can talk about. So. And, 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 and a big piece of this also, uh, I tell this to people all the time. Chris does everything on the podcast. So the, the, the very least, at the very least, I can pick a topic. And in normal conditions, typical conditions. You know, did you hear that car? You That's a car? I thought somebody was in the room with you, bro. <laughs> bro, so, so, hey, actually, pause, pause, pause. Your boy is, uh, you know, it's my first time buying a car. You know what I'm saying? I just bought me a car. My first baby, you know what I'm saying? And I got that for me. You know what I'm saying? It take 91, though. Bring it. And I didn't know What type until... of car you got? So, let's talk about this for real quick. Um, oh, here we go. Selfishness, toxic Mike, Self- <laughs> selfishness, guys. All that wellness talk, talking about some. Oh man, we gotta save the earth. Climate change is real. This man said his car take premium gas. And he, if you know what premium gas is, bro, how much smoke that what what, what are we talking smoke. about? That's like diesel. This man's smoke. This, this man's putting pure oil into his vehicle. It's not gasoline. It's pure sludge, and it's burning up and going into the atmosphere. He's part of the problem. Again, toxic Mike. Go ahead. I, I, I am a part of a pro- part of the problem. I'm gonna give you two answers. One, I'm gonna tell you about what whip I got, and also I'm gonna, you know, what do they call it? Call back what you said earlier about Grantee uh-huh. and your argument against Grantee. You said that it's not us as individuals. Us as individuals really can't impact the climate. It's really the corporations, the one that's doing the business. So, Chris, is it on me that the vehicles being sold to me that are available to me in inventories? Right. You're not wrong, but in LA, I ain't never seen the air quality like that. Uh, air quality in it's LA so crazy. You walk outside, bad. you need a gas mask. It's they was so wearing COVID bad. masks before COVID. You can cut that air. You can cut the air with a knife. Cut, cut the air dense. The air is dense. It's not just people being smug and full of themselves. So it's the air quality itself is thick. Yeah. It's thick. thick out there. It's bugged thick. out. Thick. Thicker than your feet. Um, the whip that I got is a Mini Cooper, Chris. The second story is I got a Mini Cooper S Clubman. You know. Like England, 007, little ass. So I got the whip. I had a choice between that and a Beamer. I'm in Los Angeles. Chris, and I'm, I'm in Compton right now. I am not interested in driving around in a vehicle that makes me more visible to people. Um, <laughs> how do I don't want to say it. <laughs> I ain't trying to get robbed, bro. I ain't trying to get approached. I don't want nobody up in my shit. I don't. And you know, the first thing you think about when somebody pull up in a Mooney Cooper is that it's not going to be a dude getting out the car. <laughs> So first of all, not only do you see the whip and you're like, oh, that's not no threat. Then I get out the car with my little, uh, with the hoochie daddy shorts and, and, and the flip flops on with the little T. Like, man, okay, he, 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 he a nigga, but he not a nigga. So he ain't trying to ride away. He can't be. He can't be. He can't be. Spicy. And so at that point, I Spicy. take that. I take that. I take that. You want to know why? Because I'm safe. Because I'm safe. So I'm going to ride around in a Mini 60. Cooper in my 91. <laughs> <laughs> Doing all the things, all my activities in the Mini Cooper. You know, I'm going to do that because I'm safe you know what i'm saying so yeah i picked the mini cooper over the beam it was a smart choice mike mike said he got a mini cooper like that's not a full size sedan for him you know what i'm saying i, I appreciate the candor but you know, let's be real man <laughs> man said he got a mini cooper like he, knows, he just got a cooper for everybody mike that's just a cooper for me it's a mini for mike 
You know, he'd be in that joint. Man, there's so much room. Like, so much room. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. I feel comfortable in that joint, bro. I got so much leg room in that joint. It's crazy. It has enough space for me. Turn for some sauce on it. Say they got a. It's a sport. Yeah, it go from zero to forty in fifteen seconds. Like what the. <laughs> <laughs> on the higher way, you put that, you put the joint on sport, you get the little, you know, you put it in sport, you get the little, and then I'm like, Yee. Also, another thing. <laughs> <laughs> you can hit a propeller in the back, just kick ah, in. You know, ah, ah, propeller. Ah, ah, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh. I don't know if anybody on this joint, y'all listening, y'all have been in a Mini Cooper, man. They even got different style gauges, man. Like Doctor Who in that joint, bro. Yeah. We were looking up. Like, a, it, everything's in circles. Like Mini Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what mm-hmm. is going on in this joint, man? What is it? Willy Wonka car, man. Oh, yeah. Disney Imagineers. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Car, the, the, the driving council is not my favorite. It's not my favorite. I think it, it looks silly. But the whip from the outside and the way it drive, my kind of car. My kind of car. I'll tell you that. Yeah. So, yeah, I got me a little 2017 baby that, that, I, that I own myself, man. I'm blessed. Sexy and blessed. That's what it was. Man, you should have got a truck. Check out truck, Chris. Why like the other guys that drive Mini Coopers? You know, you j- big little dude jumping out the big truck, man. <laughs> Wee! Wee! <laughs> Wee! <laughs> he, just, he gotta open the door. He gotta put his arm. Like this. <laughs> I gotta get out of the car like one leg, next leg. Wee! <laughs> I hope nobody see it. Jump up, close the door. I gotta step on the uh, the little ledge to hop up on the door to close it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, good. Yeah, I gotta yeah, reach yeah, for it to get in the car like this. Giving Mike a hard time, <laughs> but Mike not even short like that for real. For real. I be giving Mike a hard time. You're not even short like that. I, I met shorter dudes like Nev. Nev's short. It's Nev. My man. Extra yeah. meaty, extra sm- man. Biggest personality yeah. I've ever heard in my Nev. life. Deepest voice in the world. It's crazy. You'd be like, who is that talking? And then you Shout look over, you, you look over the crowd. You can't see nobody, but you hear him. <laughs> And then, the, and then the crowd, you know, split, it's split, and you like, oh, what's up, man? You listen to the podcast. We have merchandise. We got hoodies. We got tees. Right? We got hats. We got patches. We got raincoats. We got, uh, oh, man, we got condoms. We got lighters. You know what I'm saying? We got perf control. We got, uh, <laughs> we got flip flops. We got paddles. You know what I'm saying? We got beads, waist and anal. You know what I'm saying? We got uh, <laughs> we got we got magic wands. I'm talking about for pulling rabbits out of hat and pulling birds out the nest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'll go ahead and go up to beyondhoodandevil.com backslash shop. Get your merch today. Thank you. This topic around selfishness and, and selflessness, man. Uh, you brought it up, so you you want to intro it a little bit? Because I know I'm gonna go crazy on it. But do you want to intro it a little bit, bro? Just from your perspective, and we can run from that. Man, I was just listening to little brother. I had to go uh, tangent out the gate, even in the explanation. Tangent. I had to go to court. Crazy. And not only am I going to court, I mean, people be like, "Oh, I'm going to court." It'd be where they live at, bro. I'm out in Super Virginia, like in North Carolina. You ever heard of Eastern <laughs> Carolina, bro? Neither had I until what? I had to go to court out there. You are in Northern Virginia. You're in Nova. You're in Nova. You're not in Richmond. You're not in Roanoke. You're not in like where? Where? Like you're not. Bro, why in, are you in... doxing me right now? What's up with you? Why are you? Why are you going there though? I had to go when I went for my great aunt when she passed, bro. She on this way. I had to go to a funeral. You feel good about yourself? God bless. I always feel good, even in spite of when bad things and natural things happen to people. See a blessing. He only believe in God, man. He only believe in Jesus. Why you got a Jesus piece? <laughs> <laughs> you can't be saying nobody blesses. What Why you talking about? <laughs> hey man, what are you talking about, man? See, he talks to Mike so selfless, so selfish, wrapped up in what he had going on. You know what I'm saying? His personal life. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, things coming apart at the seams. And he, <laughs> <laughs> at the seams. At the seams. So yeah, bro, I don't care about your. Nah, hey, I understand. I, I did check in on that Sunday though. On your way back, when you was driving, when you was driving yeah, back, did. we did. We did, did talk. We did yeah. talk. Yeah. Uh, Yes. Hey, put my business yeah. out there. Fall into pieces every time I fall <laughs> down. <laughs> On my way, I fall into pieces. That used to be my song, bro. I was a little yeah. going through. It. I was I sad, boy. sad boy. Sad boy. <laughs> Facts. Facts. The other drink, the Lord, the stand, you know, stand by Eminem. JT's gone cold. I wonder why. You know, that I song, st- song. That's, that course. song still gets me in my feelings. <laughs> Anytime I hear that song, it triggers me and I just, I turn it off. I just, at a point, at the point that I heard that song growing up, it just never sat well with me. Uh, and on that album, I always skip that song. Thousand percent. I always skip stand. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. 
But, oh, but the wild like part it. is that the real like song, it. the real song by Dido, don't do it for me. <laughs> it's <laughs> just Stan. The real song by Dido, don't do it for me. Like, yeah. like she's singing it, it's like, uh, not it. But when I heard it on the Eminem version with the <sighs> bass, with the kick and the snare and the hip hop, I'm like, oh man, I'll be in my mode. I'll be, I, I'm traveling back. <laughs> Uh-huh. To back in time, to moments of thinking about all the missteps I had in my life, <laughs> all the scary time, all the scary, song, hours, another, all the scary hours, all the scary hours. You want to know another song by Sanford? It's he got a song called "The Coldest Stare." You're giving me the coldest stare, like you don't even know I'm there. That's the song. That's song <laughs> right there. Yeah. My sub, when he was with a sub track, you know what I'm saying? When he's in a group sub track, man. Mm. That song right there. Mm. That Jane put me in my demo too. But mm. whole time Travis Scott album fire. Some of it good, some of it bad. He got the, he got the parts where it's good. But let's talk about being selfish. Have y'all have you listened to the album? All the verses. <laughs> he's he's rapping on that Jane, bro. But it's like he's been doing features for like the past two, three years. And the yeah, pe- selfish. features? N- no. Features? Mm. Selfish. Mm, not good. <laughs> Man. Wasn't the way. <laughs> I was listening to him. Here, here, I was to him. here. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, uh-huh. I was like, because usually, you usually somebody got an album coming out. You listen to the features, like, oh, he's cooking. Going like, he's going. They're this going album crazy. gonna be fire. Mm-hmm. I've been listening. I was like, man, this album gonna be. What's my? This is so. This is He need to go back to. He could have kept that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear that. Shit. <laughs> so, those verses that he kept for his album are legendary. In in my eyes, bro. In my eyes, the second half, the beat switch to the second half, I was like, yo, where this been for the past two years? He was rapping on that joint, bro. Then he had another joint, the joint with him and Drake. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I've heard more John Blaze from both of them. It's all right. He got another joint on there, though, with Beyonce. Fire. I'm not even a Beyonce fan like that. I'm gonna get killed. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I'm not a Beyonce fan like <laughs> this that. is not the season to say any. This is this. I'm about to say, hey, hey, hey. This is, hey, yo, bro. No, 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 no and, and and the thought that I had, I was just like, if you go to a Beyonce concert, it's not that you can't like her music for sure, but I'm just talking about, you know, I'm, I'm talking about your homies, Chris. That's like, that's like, I'm looking like, like if, 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 uh, if Josh, if, 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 if Handsome Jones show up to a Beyonce concert, it's because he's going with his lady. And if he don't officially got a lady publicly, if he's going to that concert, it's because he's going for a lady. And so, and I'm not just, you know, I'm just using Josh as an example, but the dudes that I'm seeing going to the Beyonce concert, if they got a little roster and the girl's wondering, like, you know, where she's standing in his life, if he going to a Beyonce concert and you ain't there with him, he with somebody else. Because ain't no other reason for him to be there. He don't love Beyonce that much. He don't love Beyonce that much. He going with somebody and they going to be singing that whole night and you ain't it. Unless she bought his ticket. Man. Man, listen, man. This I, is not I the season to be talking. This is not the season to be talking about Beyonce. This is not the season. You just said you just said the same thing I'm saying. She, I, she just don't make music for me. I don't think. I did not just say that. Make a top. To, you just said she, if a dude is listening to Beyonce, he doesn't listen to her or listen to her. He's bringing. He's doing it for the experience for his girl. Yeah, that's, not, not that, that's no. That's, that's no opinion on her music. That is just saying like, what? Are you, yeah, what are you talking about? I'm not saying the same thing as you. You're talking about like a personal opinion that you have around Beyonce and her music and how it sits with you. I'm saying the same thing. I am the guy. I will take if my girl loved Beyonce. I am the guy. Concert in a minute. <laughs> yeah, I'm that guy. I don't care for her music. I'm there for the women. I'm not there for Man. myself. So that's what leads me back Man. to what I was saying before I was really interjected upon. I think she ruined Jay Z. Who is my guy? But pre Jay, pre Beyonce, Jay Z, post Beyonce, Jay Z, two different individuals. I like debauchery. All my mommies bounce. I like big pimping. Okay, let me let me let me interrupt real quick because I do want to say what is what when is the line? Because it's like, was is it crazy in love or dangerously in love? The name of the album, yeah, right? say crazy in love. The song, Cra- current song, was crazy in love. Is the album called Crazy in Love too? I think. I, think. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's Beyonce she's she, she she she's bedazzled and she in that joint. Um, that's the last album I listened to of Beyonce, and that is an incredible Hall of Fame level album. I say that to say one J all through that, like on the on the production or the back end or something. Album, like that. yeah, thousand percent. That album was fire, bro. Fire hits. Main hits. five songs. I gotta look them up because it's been a while since I listened to it. Uh, me, myself, Not and I. That fire. For sure. Me, me, myself, and I was on that joint. Um, Hated that song. It's a great song. What are you talking about? Uh, the song Hated that she had with Jay Z, uh, Crazy it. in Love. It was a song that joint. Dun, 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 dun. She walking. Dun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, bro, that's just fire. Um, what else? 
What is what's oh I don't know why I'm thinking of him right now and this is a total fucking tangent. Uh Jaheem, what's his name? Jaheem is a singer. Is, is it Jaheem? Like it's it's so I say this to say when I hear like an old old song from him, it's like, yeah, am I thinking about that song top of mind? Do I know the do I know the lyrics when I hear it? Absolutely. Do I know the song title if I'm bringing it up right now? Probably not. But when I hear that joint, I'm going crazy. So that Beyonce album. Just in case. Cra- name another one. Just in case I don't make it home tonight. I'm going to make love to you for the last time, baby. That's, that's Jaheem. Just in case, just in case. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's Jaheem. And you got Charlene. You know what I'm saying? By, um, what's Anthony Hamilton? Man. It's Anthony Hamilton. All those Anthony, songs came out yeah. at the same time. So I say that to say, yeah, that was a... <laughs> we had a time in that decade, right? So yeah, so maybe we are saying the same thing. Oh. I'll concede. Maybe we had a time in that decade. <laughs> Oh. Just washed over me. We had a child. We had a we had a time. Last night, child. Had a time. Oh, that being well. said, my fault. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So, like I said, I feel like she ruined Jay Z. I'm. I, I he like. Said, he Club said it three Jersey, times. Jay Z. Yeah. Okay. That's my opinion. What they gonna say if I meet Jay Z? I tell them that. I'm like, yo, man. I'm a fan. I always been a fan, but I really miss your old jiggy raps. I do. And you stop being a jiggy rapper when you got in a relationship with Beyonce. That's a state. That's a statement of fact. The music. There was a market change from him being with Beyonce and then not being with Beyonce. It's different. The music is different. Let Let's call it a spade a spade. Every time they make songs together, people be going crazy. Those are not my favorite songs because he always, it's like, I can tell that he's rapping for her audience. He's not rapping to his audience. And that's why I, I listen to Jay-Z to be talked to about stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like to listen to it for the content of the lyrical, the lyrical content. And I feel like when he's in with Beyonce, it's just pop rap. It's not nothing substantive. It's not even wordplay. It's not technical. It's just he's doing the bare minimum. It's like autopilot Jay-Z. And that's why I don't like, I don't like autopilot Jay-Z. I like Jay-Z when he be rapping. Yeah, of course. And I'm going to just, this, this is going to be my last statement on, on, on Beyonce and Jay-Z in this topic. I believe that any person that is ambitious, their ambition goes through the roof when they have the security of a partner. And so when I think about yeah. Jay, the, 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 cause he was already, he was already there. The leap just the, to exponentially grow, having that security, that, 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 not that batter in your back, but that hype man, that, so, that source of support. That unconditional shit that allowed him to go through the roof to get to where he is today. So I'll sacrifice some jiggy raps to be the billionaire that he is today doing what he's doing, for sure. Thank you, Beyonce. Chris and I have had a hell of a 2023. A hell of a one. And I'll say yeah. mine kind of stems back to probably 2022, for real, for real. Because if I link it back to the playlist piece, again, when I'm at a peaceful state, when I'm when I'm operating with extreme joy and I feel good about things, I'm making music. I'm, I mean, I'm making playlists of just music. I'm into it, right? Because music is a soundtrack of life for me, right? I ain't made no playlist really since 2021. Because niggas been going through it. <laughs> so we actually been wanting to talk about stuff that's happening with us for a long time so much so that chris actually just this this is breaking the fourth wall this is some office extra super fan episode type shit uh chris cut out all of the commentary last week that i wanted to share with y'all you did that you did you did right and this week it seems like it's coming back <laughs> so i'm actually sensing the trend of us being like we really want to talk about this but we're not gonna talk about this so we danced around this whole topic and i don't know if y'all been noticing you know we've been dancing around a few topics <laughs> In the last few weeks, because we really want to talk about what we want to talk about. But when we gonna shoot our shot, Chris? When is it appropriate to talk about what we want to talk about? I don't know. Is it, is right it now, selfish? Bro. Actually, 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 yeah, that's the thing. Is it selfish to talk about the topic that we want to address right now? And if and if it is selfish, why? I have my understanding of why it may be selfish for me, but why is it selfish for you? It's selfish for me to, to want to talk about it because it's only one sided. And there, so I'm somebody that doesn't necessarily listen. I'm being honest. Like this is my thought. I'm listen, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm somebody. Who who really doesn't really like to have counsel with others when it comes to issues I'm having, especially interpersonal relationships. You know mm. that for a fact. <laughs> I only reach out when I'm in under extreme duress. Dire, like dog. It's dire. I've exhausted all <laughs> techniques. Yes, I've exhausted all <laughs> techniques, and I am now at my breaking point. I need counsel. So that one thing that Simple P used to always say, R.I.P. Simple P, was. In a, count, in a multitude of counsel, there is truth. That's something mm. I cannot stress enough. If you are a young man, a young woman, non-binary person, if you got some people that you can reach out to in your tribe, in your village, in your community, in your immediate friend group that you can go to to get honest opinion, 
without coloring it. And somebody that's going to give it to you straight, no chaser, like real live, real talk. Like, yo, if you wrong, they're going to tell you you're wrong. If you're mm-hmm. right, they'll tell you you're right. If they say mm-hmm. you need to find a middle ground, they'll tell you that you find a middle ground. I'm lucky enough to have a council of individuals that I look to that I'm <laughs> proud enough and able to call friends and brothers. Like, yo, I'm struggling in this way, man. And I don't know what to do. Everybody told me the same thing, more or less. Chris, you're a big guy. And I just, and, that, and that's that. That's why I always mention it so much on the podcast. I'm a big guy. And I don't mean that in terms of stature. I mean, like, words. I mean, intelligence. I mean, candor. I mean, conversation, communication. Like, mm-hmm. the way that I'm able character. to present myself. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm a big dude. I'm a big, I'm a big, I'm a large figure. So when I get into a situation when I'm at odds with my partner, everyone tells me, Chris, you got to dial it back. Because when I, because the issue is when I get heated, I'm 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 on fire, I'm on fire. Cause He's it take and it fire. take a lot for me to get on fire though. Yeah, but it take a lot for me to get on fire because I try to keep it ice cold. Like you know, what I'm saying like Andre three thousand. Well, what's cooler than cool? Ice cold. Ice cold. What's cooler than cool? Ice cold. I be trying to be ice cold, but once I'm hot, it's like all right, you you exactly you want to be there. You want to take a day. I'm gonna take. Let's take a day. Let's see. Let's see what's going on. You want you want you want you ain't got the sword. You ain't got those. You ain't on with the sword. I know you're not on with the sword, so I'm trying to sit here and talk to you. I'm trying to hold you, and you 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 trying to swing. So you want to fight? Let's fight. So we we get into the ver- a verbal competition. You know what I'm saying? We in a sparring match now with the words and thoughts and ideas. I'm cornering your ideas. Now you frustrated. Now I'm a dime this and that and this and that. You don't like talking to me. It's like word word. You don't like talking to me. Word. <laughs> we just was talking fine when you felt like you had the upper hand, but now I've cornered your ideas. You know what I want to talk. So what I'm saying, I say all that to say. The reason why I don't, I feel like it's selfish to have this conversation is because the other person is not here. Hmm. If the other person was privy enough to defend their thoughts and ideas, I feel like it would be a fruitful conversation to have. But because of the way it's going to be perceived and I'm presenting it one sided, because the way I present things, it makes people feel like I'm positioning them to be a villain and I am the victim. But in reality, that's only because I don't argue about things when I know I'm when I know I'm wrong. Does that makes sense. Like I only yeah. die on heels that I know I'm right about. Like, yo, I am morally, I have the moral upper hand. I am, I am righteous in this moment. So I'm willing to argue this until the end, bitter end. Cause I'm right. And then deep down inside, you know, I'm right. That's why I'm arguing with you. Cause you know, mm-hmm. I'm right too. But mm-hmm. if it's something that's like a difference of opinion or, a preference. I'm not willing to argue it because that's subjective. But what I'm doing now is an objective truth. Like, yo, this is an objective thing for me, and I need you to be able to meet me there. If you can't meet me there, I'm going to show you why you're, what you're saying is incorrect, and you should be meeting me there. Because <laughs> I'm, what I'm ultimately asking of you is this, and I don't ask mm-hmm. enough of you, or I don't ask anything of you really. So I don't want. I don't see how this should be a problem for you. Mm-hmm. So that's the reason why. I feel like I'm being selfish because it's like it would be a selfish thing for me to just go out here and just bomb on somebody that's unable to defend themselves. That's real, man. And I think that's tough for me, though, because it's it's like, can you not have a conversation about your situation that incorporates someone else without them being present in that conversation? You know what I mean? Like, that means we can't we can't talk about shit. Like, why would you call me and talk about it? If that person can't share what they're thinking in order for me to have a balanced, objective opinion, why are you talking to me about it? Because I can only address what you're bringing to the table. I can say, I'm going to take all this with a grain of salt and try to give you a a perspective on this based on what you're sharing, trusting that you are trying to not manipulate me to side with you, right? Because if that's what you're looking for, cool, I can just be a sounding board. I can listen to you. I can support you in that, right? You're saying, hey, I need some guidance. I want some guidance. And I have to put forth the most objective perspective as possible, which means I have to receive yours as objective so that I can give you something that is as close to whatever that truth was so that you can do something with it that puts you in the best position possible, right? But if you line on my ass just to make me feel like you are the one that is the victim in this when you are really the perpetrator or you kind of play, you shadow both places, right? There's some ways you're being victimized, some ways you're perpetrating, but you only want to paint it as you being a victim. And I can't really help you if I give you advice because it's not actually truthful to the situation, right? And so when you say that, it's a problem for me because it's like, how, how, can, how can we have conversations about someone else's experience without all those parties being involved? That's just unrealistic. Also, do you want to have a conversation? And this not, 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 I guess make it personal. Do you want to have a conversation with your lady on a podcast with me here so that we could talk about this shit to our listeners? <laughs> no, maybe actually. Oh, I'm, I'm game. I'm game. <laughs> you're right, you're right. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Actually, 
And this is me. <laughs> this is me being myself. This is my real self. When you're right, you're right. I don't really put my real self on here a lot. Like last week was I was like my real self. This is another moment I'm being my real self. When you're right, when I'm right, I'm right. And I'm I'm and it, when you're right, you can't be that's the no greater thing than being right, but also being morally right and objectively mm. right mm. and subjectively right. I'm right in all matters. Yeah, right. Your, your righteousness is in alignment. <laughs> it's in alignment. Yes, everything I'm right at all. At, not, at no point I'm not right at this. So I was like, dog, I need help. Cause I'm, I, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to not be, I'm not trying to go there in this moment, yeah. but I'm right across the board. I'm right across the board. So I don't understand why this is even an issue. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. to say all that, that's what I'm saying. It'd be selfish of me to present it that way. Cause it's like, I feel like I'm just be dumping on somebody and I'm saying, I'm not here to mischaracterize or, uh, mm. what's the word? Uh, not mischaracterize, but I'm not here to talk derisively yeah, about anybody, yeah. man. Yeah. De- demonize somebody. That's not what I'm mm-hmm. here to do. Especially somebody that I do still have a lot of love for. Yeah. 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 Like I'm not trying to do that. Like I don't, I'm not somebody that do that a lot. I only do that people that have wronged me in the greatest ways. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or try my trust. You know what I'm saying? Those mm-hmm. people get, get talked crazy about forever. But in this situation, it's not necessarily the trying of trust or loyalty. It's just a difference of objective values. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if, yeah. in that case, you can't be mad at somebody for that because that's a that's literally a personal life experience has painted this person to be that way. And there's no amount mm-hmm. of conversation I can give this person or a, a argument. No, there is no argument to move somebody off position that a life has taught them to be at because mm-hmm. they would need to have a different experience in order to move from that position. And that's somewhere I had that's something I had to get to. Like, dog, mm-hmm. it's over. Like, I can't. I can't move you from this. So is there a level of selflessness in how you've been operating based on you saying that you would be selfish if you operated in a different way? The way that you, like your gut feel, your gut yeah. reaction, your ego, egotistical reaction, like to be like, yo, I really want, I, I'm on fire and it's about to be straight flames and you're about to catch all of them. So are you operating in that? Is this an act of selflessness to protect um, that situation, at least from the public eye right now? Chocolate Champ wants to burn it down. That's what Chocolate Champ always wants to do. The Chocolate Champ wants to burn it down. You play with me. I'm not, I'm not, I don't understand. I don't understand how you play with me. Why, why are you playing yeah. with me right now? Yeah. And then, the, but the other side of me, the, the, hum, the humble Chris, you know what I'm saying? Regular Chris, it's like, nah, man, it's not worth it. It's not worth the energy or the, the, the time to invest in that when you could just be making it as civil as possible and being civil and being righteous, like being benevolent. So mm. I'm just opting to be benevolent and righteous as opposed to trying to burn it down because I don't get anything from burning it down. Because I'm somebody that always tries to waste the options. I never want to cut my nose to spite my face. Mm. And it's like, I could do that. I could do that. I could liquidate, do this, do that, do this, do that, and be out of the situation immediately ASAP. But then I won't be in a, I won't, I wouldn't have prepared in a way for when it's time for me to transition. I could transition to something even better. And that's what I need to be doing. And that's not meaning like a relationship or nothing like that. I'm talking about just another situation in general. Like my next step needs to be my best step. And I feel like a lot of times I moved in the past, it's always because I have to. It's not because I want to. So that's for real. And that for me is the reason why I believe I'm operating selflessly um, instead of operating selfishly around my shit that I've been navigating. And I want to be personal. I want to be specific and not say the shit that's happening to me. Right. It's just happening to me. <laughs> it's things I need to navigate because things are happening to me and I happen to it. There's oh, so many variables that are at play here. I have to navigate them all. And so for me, I made a commitment, you know, at the onset of when all of these things, when the seams started to fall apart in the life that Chris said I'm living, at the onset of those seams coming apart, I made a commitment and said I was going to hold myself accountable to a statement that I made, which was to say that I'm going to navigate this entire situation with grace. With grace. And I'm going to play nicely because as I navigate this situation, I want to be perceived and I want to be known that I held myself accountable to being graceful to what I said to you. No matter what I learn in the midst of navigating this and what we'll experience together and how I feel like I am being treated and how I'm being received, I'm still going to operate with grace because I already said it. Now, Toxic Mike wants to get into his bag and I'm real good. At being petty. Toxic Mike, Petty Mike, man, you, you, when you let me from out the covers, bro, and I'm outside, I, I, I can make things pretty miserable. And I remember we made this, I told you this before about like work. My former CEO, my mentor, he said, yeah, Mike, when your energy's off, everybody can feel it. You can change a room with how you emote. Like you don't even have to say nothing. Just how you show up, your energy is so powerful. When you show up and you're on that time, nobody really want to be around you because they don't know what to do with you. 
<laughs> like they don't know what to do with you. On the flip side, though, when you come in and you are who you typically are, people just gravitate towards you. It's a strong orbit because they want to be around your energy. I've had friends tell me in the last year in so many ways that like, man, Mike, you seem off. Like that brightness, that 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 floweriness, that optimism, that half cup, like that cup half full, right? That that jokey jokey, the silliness that I would bring to a lot of things. Like, man, you're real serious right now. Like, or, you know, that these are that. So I'm navigating some shit. Toxic Mike is like, it's like it, it, Toxic Mike is looking at Michael being like, hey, nigga, let me in the game. Like, let me in the game. I got it. Like, let me yeah. in the game. But I just know that that would be me going against what I said of operating with grace and respecting the situation and trying to show up the best way possible. And I say that best way possible as in just honoring my commitment. Oh, that's the best way possible for me is to honor the commitment. And so I'm um, trying not to be selfish. And so for me, there is a time limit to that. Cause I said that once things, once all the seams have fallen, right. And everything is done. And I fully navigated this transition that I'm in. Then I will talk about it. Cause at that point I've already honored my original commitment was to operate with grace through the stage. Now once we're out of the stage, it's only popping. So Chris, it's for me a matter of timing. <laughs> Cause again, I'm gonna get mine. I always do. And so it's for me, it's like, I want to be, I, I want to be mindful. I want to be mindful of how it is done because I want it to be tactful and I want it to be tasteful. And I agree with you. There's, there's lots of things that I haven't said or haven't shared um, about my situation um, because I know that I don't want to disparage, demean, undermine um, the people that are in my life, right? That are in this situation with me. I love them. I honor them. I respect them. And so I don't want to shit on them. You still can tell people when they're being shitty. Especially when I'm impacted by the shit. <laughs> so right. you and I are navigating this to our best abilities. And I and I am proud of how we're navigating all of our trials and these tribulations. I am excited for when we can stop talking around this shit and other topics because we can finally get into this, which would allow us to let loose to then really get into these topics and show up the way we really want to. Because we no longer have to um, hamstring ourselves, right? Um, based on the commitments that we've made uh, to our partners in our situations. I remember in 2016, I had this, I had an inkling things wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? In my, in my situation, you know what I'm saying? Some of I wrote this song called AMPM. Like it was basically like an examination of like where I was at that moment in my life. You know what I'm saying? So it was mm -hmm. like, it go, how much would it take to sell a dream? How much would it take to sell some lies? How much would it take to lose your truth or have your morals be compromised? That's the beginning of the song. And I was just like, and, I, and it's like, that's why, I, it's like when you, that's the, and when I think about stuff like that, it's like, man, I, like people be like, oh, you're not this, you're not, it's like, bro, I be really having these moments where I be writing down how I'm feeling, bro. Like, mm -hmm. and then it's like, the, I ain't gonna say the whole song because I, I ain't trying to rap to y'all, but the last joint, the chorus go, what happened to the man I was? Tell me who I used to be. What happened to the man I was? When did I diverge from me? Can <laughs> see the life I want, but is it too late for me? I told myself I'd come. I hope I wait for me. That's the chorus, bro. I was going crazy. I was, like, I was going through it. I was going through it, bro. It say, it say, I told myself I'd come. I hope I wait for me. Like, bro, bro, I was going through some shit. I was yeah. going through some shit. So, and I, and I had this little, you know what I'm saying, in the court, you know, the, all that, like, imagine that. I'm writing that, and I'm walking, that's what I'm walking and carrying, like, in my mind, like, at, at tw in 2016. I'm like, what, what do you look like, 26? You know what I'm saying? Mm, like going through yeah. that type of situation. So yeah. it's like wrestling with these type of things because it's like ultimately I've already encountered this once before, multiple in different capacities and different ways where I felt like I've done something being selfless in the situation, trying to compromise, being flexible. And I think to that, I told myself I'd come. I hope I wait for me. So it's like this moment is just another moment in which I thought I told myself I'd come and I'm still waiting for myself to come and that I'm looking for someone else to join me in my journey. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking for somebody yeah. else that's willing to be flexible with me. Someone that's willing to compromise mm -hmm. with me. So it's mm -hmm. like in that moment, you can't be mad because it's like ultimately that person's not doing anything wrong. They're doing what they think is best. You know what I'm saying? Have you the little part where I said the mm -hmm. um how much would it take to sell it, sell your dreams? How much would it take to sell some lies? How much would it take to lose your truth or have your morals compromised? Like those are the things you are ultimately asking of someone when you're asking them to make a market change from what they perceive to be correct. So it would be selfish of me to expect that person to compromise in such a way if it's such a big issue for them. You get what I'm saying? 
So mm -hmm. all I can do in that moment is try to just be present and be accepting of their choices and just be like you said, I guess in new age terms, be graceful about the situation. So it's like when they ask me how I'm feeling, it's like, man, you know, it is what it is, man. If it was going to get better, it would have got better. And I think we can always wrap it up that way. And, and I, I, the challenge with that is when some people hear that, it, they feel like it minimizes everything that you just said prior to that. It's like, no, all of these things are true. I feel this way. <laughs> the whole 85% of it up to that 100%, 85% of that, I feel this way. All the things, right? That 15% to put a cap on it is just like, you know what? It is what it is. I'll navigate this. I've been through these types of things before. I know how to navigate. I'll be fine. Right now, it just doesn't feel good. That's ultimately the way it is. Most people want you to harp on it, like really like dig in and say, oh, things are terrible. Things are bad. Things are terrible. Things are bad. Are they? Yeah, I have those waves of those moments. Most of that time, though, I feel pretty good about was what I'm navigating and how I'm navigating it because at the end of the day, I'm mostly focused on like my joy and my peace. And so if there's something that's interrupting that, especially if it's a variable in my life that no longer wants to be in my life, and then I have to accept that and then move on because what I'm pursuing is this this stream of of like feeling joyous and peaceful in what I'm doing and at and at and at and kind of like just like at ease with that like <laughs> shit gets nasty around you <laughs> but it can't change how I feel you know about myself and how I move through life and so Chris the one thing you said you said selling dreams the closest I'm gonna get to getting into this without us actually diving into the topic um, like you know fully is like the, the concept of like selling dreams. I felt like I feel like selling dreams is really expensive, especially when the person doesn't buy in. You know what I mean? And so I've spent over a decade, you know, selling this dream, trying to sell and create this vision with somebody that wasn't buying into it. Right. And so it's like you can keep taking somebody's calls. <laughs> You can keep participating. You can keep kind of building a strategy for what this thing could look like. But at the end of the day, we need to sign that paper to say that, like, we're locked in and we're doing this thing, right? You know, you get to that point and that motherfucker could pull out of the deal, right? So you don't spend all of this time selling this dream and that shit gets really expensive. That shit is really taxing. It's really exhausting. While you are still optimistic about what happens once this dream is sold, because now you get to put the dream into practice. You get to implement. You get to live the dream. And so you get all of this way and you realize the partner that you were navigating and building this with was faulty. Was faulty. You can say they were faulty from the jump. You can say they were faulty at some point. Only thing that matters at the end of the day, they were faulty because that when you get to that end point when you're supposed to, you know, start to embark on that dream, they pull out of it. And so for me, I have to be very mindful now of like the dreams that I'm selling. And I should be selling dreams, <laughs> right? And also be mindful of the people that I'm trying to get to buy into this vision that I have. And like, that's the next foray for me is just being mindful and thoughtful about myself and the situations that I'm trying to create for myself. Because I've made some obvious mistakes. I've disregarded very clear signs that were showing, demonstrating to me that like, yeah, dude, this reality that you're trying to build toward, you can see this path, you're actually edging toward this path. And you're just not accepting that right now. And that's what I want to be more truthful with myself is just like, what is the situation and accepting that for what it is and then taking the appropriate action instead of hanging on to shit, trying to manifest that dream that I was selling. That's like a big thing for me right now. In my personal life, my romantic life, all my life, professional life, just trying to step away from selling dreams and just be a part of something that just exists for a moment until I'm surrounded by those who really want to pour, in me, pour into me so that the vision that I do establish, I can then have that wealth of people around me to actually manifest that vision and feel good. And that vision that now becomes a reality. Like, that's what I'm looking forward to. And that's a big shift, bro. That's a big shift. And so- It's not really a shift as much as it's just a, it's an over, overhaul. And it's like, fair. in my mind, it's like, I was having a conversation with my mentor, Kenny or whatever. And he basically just broke it down like this. He said, you got 20 summers, Chris. I was like, what you talking about? He's like, you got 20 summers. And I was thinking about it. He's like, 20, I was like, 20 summers of what? He's like, man, the more I teach you, the dumber you get. He like to say, yeah. like, you got 20 summers, bro. He said, the summers oh. is when you're up. He said, Chris, that's when you, oh, typically that's when you're up. That's when things are going well for you. You get money, you know, people contact you, clients reach out, da, 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 right? Mm -hmm. He's like, you got 20 summers. You, what do you want to do in those 20 summers that's going to move you and make sure that you're good when you, after your 20 summers? Because he basically was telling me, he's like, man, you, you know, 30 plus now, you got 20 summers left till you about to retire. So when you retire, you be working past 50, still trying to hustle at 50 plus. And I ain't never put it in that perspective because summers, 20 summers is not a lot, bro. 20 summers. And this is number, this is number 19, bro. 
So I got mm-hmm. next year starting 20 summers for real, for real, like a solid 20 summers to I'm like 55, 56. Mm-hmm. That's nuts. You know what I'm saying? So, or at least close to it. So when you think about it like that, it's like, what are you going to do in these 20 summers to build your life? To have, like, you know what I'm saying? Well, do I see myself having kids? Do I see myself having a family? Do I see myself setting down some roots? Do I see myself buying property? Do I see myself actually building a business? Do I see myself going back to school? Like, things like that. I got to kind of decide that now because these are going to be the choices that are going to lead me into the next phase of my life, bro. So it's like, do I need to be more selfish then and start thinking about the, the responsibilities that I have to my family? The, the bonds that I created with my friends is just abandon all that and try to go hard somewhere else in a different area? Or do I stay where I'm at and just let the mediocrity walk, continue to wash over me and repeat the same year for another 19, 20 summers? You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's a real conversation I have in my mind a lot. Like, and that's something like I'm, I got, I got, when I get stressed out, I get bumps and stuff on my body. Like I get stress rashes. Like, I don't know about y'all, mm-hmm. but I, people be breaking gray heads and stuff. I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? I'm blessed. I don't, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm 30 plus. I don't really look like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm a little heavy right now. When I'm slim, I look real young, but point being, I don't get gray heads and stuff like that. I get rashes. Uh-huh. Bro. So it's like, when you think, when I've been thinking about it, it's like, that's what's really on my mind. Like, I was like, man, why am I so stressed out? And it's like, cause I'm thinking about the idea of for, like what you just, what we talked about this podcast, it's like just now for the last like 15, 20 minutes. Do I need to be more selfish or do I continue mm-hmm. to be selfless? <sighs> so, man, it's a hard choice because they both lead down different roads and they have very different endings. Man, whatever you give your energy to will keep you, right? And you're giving your energy to like your location, just like geography. And then also just think about your, your family and your peoples. You're giving them that energy. So they're going to keep you as long as they can. And I think the things around us in life whether it's people or like inanimate things have the capacity to be extremely selfish and what it demands of you. Right. And I think we are also, when we're complicit in that, when we lean into it, when we try to be selfless and we lean into selfish things, right. And then at some point you become resentful, right. Of now the obligation that you feel like you have, especially if you're not getting anything in return, say for that, right. Or you, you, you feel like you are just giving and you're not getting at all. And so I, I try to position it as an and thing because I, I I think there are there are moments in my life currently and in the future where I will need to be more selfish. Like right now, I'm in a season where people are telling me to be selfish. Do your thing, Mike. Do what's best for you. I hear that a thousand percent. I'm also a person that knows that I can work on myself in a relationship and outside of one. I grew a lot in the last decade in my previous situation. I grew as an yeah. individual. Oh, there we go. You say you grew a lot in the last decade, cop. You ain't grown since like seventh grade, eighth grade, wow. max. Actually, when did I stop growing? Was it tenth grade? Probably tenth grade. That's crazy though. Hey, you about fifteen? Yeah, I stopped growing. I was fifteen. I was about Mike, five used to be eight tall, y'all. I was five eight and change. Yeah, he was tall. Tenth grade, he was tall. <laughs> but everybody else kept going up. You know. <laughs> I grew as a. <laughs> I can't even say I grew as a person because that's a person. <laughs> Physically, Pause. I had a lot of emotional growth. <laughs> a lot of emotional growth, a lot of spiritual growth. Yeah. <laughs> me- mental, uh, like all, all these growths, <laughs> except for the physical, all the olds you can think, but not the physical. Uh, I had a lot of growth, man, and I and I grew so much, and I know that not too many things in life I try to compare, but I know in comparison to my partner, I grew a lot as an individual, right? And I also knew I grew with the relationship, right? I tried to grow the relationship. So I had that capacity. So I don't feel like I haven't focused on myself. For me, I'm selfish enough to want to grow everything at at, at once (laughs) because I believe I have the capacity to. And so I'm in a season where I'm like, yeah, I can focus on myself. I can be more selfish in that way. That's not really any different than what my practice is currently. I think that the difference is I need to be more selfish in particular situations and now I need to pick very particular situations and when I need to be selfless. So I think it's like a and, right? That they're both going to happen at the same time. I'm just now very choosy around when I'm being selfish and when I'm being selfless. Chris, man, you, we, it's funny. As we kept going, I was like, yeah, we probably gonna do the whole like last 15 minutes is gonna be where the juice is gonna be. You know what I mean? It just took us to squeeze the shit long enough. But the reality is the squeeze took so long because we was bullshitting, dancing around what we really want to talk about. There's a there's an incredible level of levity that you always bring to the situation. And I know we be giggling and laughing and shit like that. So that allows it to be a little more lighter than the original topic presents itself. But that's why people come to Beyond Hood and Evil, nigga. 
because this is what they're looking for. And that's why them numbers is going up, Chris, because this is what we do. We're not one of them bullshit ass podcasts that actually don't have the mental capacity to talk about things at a deeper level because they actually only engage in surface level conversations with people because they don't know themselves or try to connect with other people. It's not us, bro. All right. That's a podcast. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you too, man.